some of the things that we're going to go through. But our topic of conversation is really the virtual third space. Um, and we'll talk about what that actually means, but building an online community uh, through social media and through websites. Um, so this virtual third space, everyone's talked around, particularly in the last year. Uh, you've got your physical environment, and you've got your virtual environment. What we're now going to talk around is that virtual third place, which is building a community. And that community can be digital, and it can also be uh, a physical space as well. So um, my name's Chris Sharma, and I co-founded Supodium. I've been in the sector, crikey, 25 years. Uh, I was originally um, in a sport health club. Before we sold out to Virgin Active, I headed up their fitness division, racket swimming, and I was overseeing gym refurbs and PT strategies across any number of 55 sites we had at the time. And about 10 years ago, I set up a consultancy business specializing predominantly in kids' sport and fitness, uh, but more latterly uh, into the adult fitness world, um, sports, leisure. Um, I set up to podium group with a co-founder in the States, uh, Taylor Olson. Uh, he's very much tech-based and we created to Podium Group. And I'll show you a video in a second and talk a little bit more around that. Uh, Ryan Grimshaw uh, is joining me. He is our uh, head of brand and marketing. So he heads up a whole division that we have, which uh, is, as Rob said, a marketing agency within to Podium Group. Um, so we are this ecosystem. We are this support and growth engine. And we'll cover that in a second. Um, I'm just going to play this video. Or no, I'm not going to play this video, um, which um, I'll send you a link to so you can play the video, which explains who we are. But, but ultimately, we're this transformational ecosystem, which sounds grand, uh, but really we are a growth engine that supports products, businesses, clubs, facilities within sport, health, and leisure. Um, we have four divisions. Uh, we have our marketing division, which Ryan heads up. Uh, we have an active division, which is consultancy, which is everything from branded uniform and merchandise, the sourcing of equipment and product. Um, and then we have a a technology and innovation division where we are custom building solutions for uh, apps and software for websites and so on and so forth. But our, at our core, we are sport, health and leisure. That is our sector and we try and support as best we can across that. We have an office in the UK, uh, down in Hampshire. Uh, our office, which is predominantly technology is, uh, in the States, is in Denver, Colorado. And over the last kind of six months, we've opened up uh, in South Africa as well and a small little office uh, in India as well. So our aim very much is to support anyone and everyone that's working in this space, uh, understanding what their problems are and solution-based approaches to what you need. Uh, we don't have an off-the-shelf list of all the things that we can do for you. We focus on marketing and branding, innovation and product development, uh, consultancy and training. Um, and my background is very heavily in kids' sport and fitness, so we do a lot of work in that space as well, talking around teen fitness products and how to integrate families into health clubs and leisure centres and, and so on. Uh, so objectives, I like to kind of set out what we're going to hopefully try and achieve together over the next 40 minutes or so, um, but providing you guys with the knowledge and tactics or some knowledge and tactics to create online communities uh, that will do those things. And I don't need to read them all out. They're pretty specific. We will share this deck with you all as well. But really creating these online communities that are adding huge value to what you do. Um, and everyone is going to look at communities in different ways. What you've got is a little sheet. Um, and at different stages during the course of the next 40 minutes or so, I'd like you just to scribble things on it. And it becomes a bit of a brain dump for certain things. It gives you a score of where you think you're achieving or where you're not achieving. And then hopefully at the end, we can go back to these and go, actually, yeah, we did tick a few boxes. Uh, and we were able to give you some tactics and some ideas uh, that will help you when you're back in your facilities. OK, I'm going to hand over to, to Ryan, uh, who's going to walk you through the first exercise, which is on your sheets of paper. Cool. Thank you, Chris. Um, first, I'd like to start with a little game and get you a bit active after, after lunch. So if you're all able to, if you'd like to stand, please. I'm just going to ask you a simple question. Almost got everyone. There we go. Everyone's up. There we go. Not bad. Not bad. Um, one being a lots of room for improvement and 10 being absolutely nailing it. Um, the question is, does your business place members at the center every, uh, of everything you do? Now, we know members, membership is important to gyms, but where do you think you sit on that? So I'm going to work through. Um, so please sit down based on where you think your business is reflected on that scale. Number one, lots of room for improvement. Two, three, four. It's good so far. We can go home. Five, 
Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Careful at the back there. <laughs> Lovely. So actually fairly positive. But let's drill down into that, what that looks like and what that means. So just to provide a bit of context around what we mean by the virtual third space, we know that 2020 and 2021 have been the years of community. Uh, we've seen that through the likes of Clap for Carers, people bonding together in, in ways that they never maybe perhaps would have previously. But what we've really seen is that a lot of branded communities have actually helped businesses the most uh, through the most difficult challenges. Um, and that's through online groups, through your website, through social media, and keeping people connected um, when they can't be physically together. And as a marketer and someone who's responsible for driving business growth, I think it's absolutely crucial that we use um, community to be at the center of everything we do. I'm gonna do a true, uh, next slide please. So this slide here is actually one that's pretty important to us at Topodium Group and that we use internally across our corporate communications and onboarding. Um, in the center here, you'll see um, what is representative of our Topodium community. And actually our community touches all these different elements of our business, um, from marketing and engagement, to our products and services, to getting actually intel and insight back from our community to better our products, better our services, better our customer success. So it's simple, right? When a member signs up, they sign up not just for your products or your services, but they also sign up to your fitness equipment to get access to those, to your PTs, to your knowledge and your expertise. But they're also signing up to be part of a community, part of something that's bigger than themselves. And your responsibility there is to help them succeed along every step of their journey, both inside the venue and outside. And that's where this change has sort of taken place, this hybrid model where it's now about social and physical help as well. So in the past, communities have predominantly been um, local, and it's typically, typically been valued as a byproduct. Community has come about through um, sales and marketing efforts, but it's not really been at the core, of, the core of it, and we've not necessarily used community to drive the business forward. It's been something that's come along as a nice to have. People recognize you, they've bonded with you as individuals, but it, that's not necessarily been at the center of it previously. But thanks to the internet, um, there's lots of communities that exist out there, no matter what your passion or interests are. From the bazaar, um, I, I think there's a Facebook group out there where, you, where people have bonded over speaking into a fan and having that funny voice come back to you. Bizarre things like that. But really, bizarre example aside, um, it's looking at how you can use those communities to create that connection, create that bond that sustains you just beyond when your digital marketing may take a hit, when um, you can't get your venue open. So through, through some of the typical and most challenging um, times. Next slide, please, Chris. Back to me. Mm -hmm. Before we do, um, just going back to this, on the top of your worksheet, there is a scale of one to 10 on that first question. So if you haven't already, just circle where you were um, at the beginning of the session we will revisit at the end and see if you're still scoring yourself as high as you were at the beginning. So uh, this next one, um, we're going to do a similar thing. Okay, uh, so if I can get everyone to stand up, we're going to look at the focus you as an organization or your business or your gym or your brand puts on member retention versus member sales. Okay, so if you are all about member retention, then you'll be scoring a one. If you are all about member sales and not about retention, you'll score um, a 10. So if you could stand up, we'll have a similar thing and we'll see at what stage people start to sit down now. So um, if you're all about retention and you're a one, sit yourself down, or a two, or a three, or a four, five. Starting to get into more about sales, six, seven. Okay, interesting. Again, circle that on your bit of paper. There's not a right or wrong answer, it's just understanding where you are putting your focuses. Um, and how they may change over time as well. So going back to the whole community piece, and community is going to play a massive 
massive um, part of member retention. You know, a reason why someone wants to come back is they're not just part of, I come to the gym, I lift weights, I drop them down, I go home, thank you very much. There is an element of, I feel part of a community. I feel part of something that, as Ryan was saying, is much bigger than I swipe my card, I come in, I go home. Um, and that's going to be absolutely crucial. So if you are building a community, and these are statistics that are based on a virtual community or an online community, these are the benefits that you could be seeing. So a 50% uh, would, uh, uh, would join a dedicated community that represents their passion. There are people out there that if you are hitting what they are interested in, they will join your community. They will be part of it. 34% would be willing to pay for exclusive content or offers connected to that particular community. So your ability to upsell, cross-sell things, they're 34% more likely to pay for something if they're part of a community that's selling it. 10% reduction in customer support costs because it goes without saying, these people are going to be supporting each other. They're going to be updating each other. The number of WhatsApp groups I'm now in at the health club that I'm part of, that people have got a question, well, it's been answered within the group. The staff are not having to get involved anymore. It's almost self-management to a certain extent. And then 300% increase in customer satisfaction ratings based on having a good online community. So if you can achieve some of those things, how much time can you now start to dedicate towards putting towards uh, an online community? So back over to Ryan and we will go through some different points on this and then there will be an opportunity for you within your sheet uh, to start writing down some notes connected to each of these. Cool. So um, what does it take to make and build an online community? So we looked at a number of brands, businesses, venues that were doing this successfully, and we analyzed those, and we came up with uh, five key threads or themes that they were all doing consistently across um, their communities that ultimately were making them successful. The first one, double down on your niche. A lot of you will be familiar with this anyway, but it's worth reiterating that the most successful businesses or brands that were building online communities were really able to identify what made them unique, what made them different from the competition, um, doubling down on that, but not only identifying what that was, but also communicating that back to the members and making sure that they are on that journey with you, that they understand you, that they connect at that level. And that's difficult sometimes because you will have members who think um, they slightly sway one way than the other. Um, so nailing that message can be difficult, um, but actually it pays dividends in the long run to have that nailed down within your community. So questions, and you've got some of these on your sheet as well. What is it that you do well that your competition doesn't? What problem do I help members overcome or achieve or um, overcome will do? Um, and where do, where do my members organically interact online? Where do they live now? Where do they hang out, so to speak? Because understanding that will make you make um, better decisions in the long run when you're building your online community. So what we'd like you to do now is, is literally spend 30 seconds to, to, to a minute just jotting down a couple of points that connect to those four questions. Let's get you thinking about that niche that you have. Uh, so if you wouldn't mind scribbling down a few things on that, I would love to get some ideas and, and, and uh, feedback from you with those questions. But literally 60 seconds to, to see if you can scribble down something that connects to those. Now, I know we've got a gym that's not open yet. So what will it be when it's open? What do you want it to be? So what do you aspire those, uh, those answers to be? If it's not a club or facility, this also works the same for a brand or a service. These first four questions are also really useful to do with um, trusted members and friends and, uh, that you have, staff that you've got. So it's really interesting to see the difference in opinion that different people have on your brand, your business, your product, and your service. Would anyone like to just shout out or throw at me um, an answer to the first one uh, around what does one of you guys do that your competitors don't? We have a diverse range of equipment that other gyms don't have. So from your perspective, one of your USPs is the, the range of equipment that's accessible to the members that join. Cool. Anyone else got anything else on that first question? Something different? Sorry, service and atmosphere. Mm -hmm. 
So creating that environment when someone walks in that they are welcomed and that's, that's the piece that stands you above your competitors in, in one of the things, perfect. So question two, um, what's the problem that you are overcoming for a member? What problems are you, are you dealing with? What's, why are they coming to you? What are you fixing? Sounds obvious, but have you got down into the granular detail of that? Knowledge. Giving them knowledge, nice. great. Confidence. Confidence, yeah, great. Um, what is it about the culture of your um, brand that stands out? So what is it that makes your branded identity? And, and a lot of people, there is this misconception with brand that it's a logo and it's a nice little color that sticks above the door. So much more to brand. And Ryan will talk your ears off this evening over drinks on the difference between a logo and a brand um, in a nice way. He'll talk your you ear off. You make me sound Absolutely. so fun. Yeah. Um, but what is it about some of the facilities that are around here that the brand, what, what makes it different? Community. So it's all around center in that community. Perfect. Dean, anything from you? What do you want yours to be? Because you're in the process of setting up a uh, a new facility. We want to be part of the community. So we're feeling very much part of you know, looking after health, well-being, and the local residents. Great. And does everyone know where their members hang out online? Face <laughs> online. <laughs> Facebook groups, Instagram, WhatsApp groups, those types of pieces. And are you now targeting those? I said earlier that I'm a, a member of a club and all of a sudden I'm in all these different WhatsApp groups for this, this class and this instructor and this thing and, and it's become a, a community, you know, and I'm hooked in and I have to switch all the notifications off so I get pinged every five minutes on, on different things. But have you established where they are? Do you know the different types of members or customers that you've got and are some hanging out in some places and some hanging out somewhere else? And just because you're used to Instagram and WhatsApp, is it different to the fact that you know, someone that is a uh, different age is hanging out somewhere else? And are you able to, to connect with them in that area? Okay, moving on. Cool, the second one was uh, master a platform. So we're not talking about digital marketing on a broader scale here where you might be across Facebook ads, Google search, you name it, you, you might be doing that. But actually specifically to community building is to master one single platform and like Chris was saying, if, if your community are more likely, most of them are hanging out on Facebook, then maybe a Facebook group is the most likely option there to, to explore. But the reason why we say master one platform is not to spread yourself too thin. Community building takes time. It can be hard work. Um, it doesn't necessarily pay off at, in the immediate. Um, but building that community long term brings that brand loyalty, that trust, that education and knowledge that you're talking about. And then you start to build this community of, of knowledge holders and advocates who basically operate on your behalf. And there's nothing more beneficial than word of mouth marketing. So as Chris was saying, you want to think, consider things like Facebook groups, um, Instagram, maybe specific channels for specific areas of your membership, um, Slack channels, uh, WhatsApp groups work particularly well um, with younger demographics as, as we've mentioned. Um, but even things like Reddit forums, um, forums have been given a bad rep, um, but actually they're still alive and kicking. And actually there's a huge um, demographic on there, an untapped resource, because not many brands are exploring that. Um, so yes, basically look around, find out where your audience or where your members are, are um, interacting online already, and then tap into that channel. I mean, there's one example that we'll, we'll share with you in a moment, where actually one brand has utilized an existing um, online community through Strava, and they're actually um, uh, monopolizing on that already built community there. So they're not building anything from scratch, they're just using it in a slightly new, different way. So we're not gonna go and give you 60 seconds again, we'll let you in your own time write down in that part of the, the workbook, uh, worksheet, uh, what platforms you use, and also what platforms could you use, or what, do you might, what, what might you need to do to go and find out what platforms would work for you moving forwards. Next one. Number three, um, so a lot of these successful brands and businesses that were building communities actually packaged up their value. And this is the really exciting part. This is the, this is the piece, the meaty piece that is gonna get your members excited about joining your community. And in a lot of cases, and this may scare some people, but it was about creating that content, understanding your services, and the advice that you can package up and offer that for free. Um, that might be a bit concerning, I'm giving all this away for nothing, but actually you've got to give something to get something in return. It's a transaction at the end of the day. 
but it's it's built up in this community sense. Um, so they're benefiting. They're, they're signed up to be part of your community and they're getting this additional service. It might be nutritional guides. It might be um, Q&As, live Facebook Lives with your PTs um, to get that connection, to build that rapport. And what I think is really important about this point is it builds that community, but it also builds that FOMO, fear of missing out. Um, so people who aren't part of that community, they naturally feel like they want to be connected, they want to be involved, they're missing out on something there. Um, and that is actually a really powerful marketing and sales tool to use within your membership or potential members. Okay, again, section on the worksheet in your own time, feel free. And on to the final one. Uh, cool. And <laughs> the final one is promote your community. Actually, it's not the final one. Second to, so, second to final one Sorry. is uh, promote your community. So by our human nature, we are drawn to connection and to find meaning. Um, and communi communities which facilitate this conversation and drive deeper engagement are going to be more successful. And we were speaking to one gym owner earlier who's actually doing all of this. It sounds great. And they found that balance between driving community and doing their own organic marketing activity activity and also doing their sales activity. Um, but what they were finding is they were actually using it as a walking, talking billboard. And I said that to them and they were like, oh yeah, we are actually. It's just a notice board for us to shout at our members. There was no communication. There was no back and forward. There was no communication between their members either. So really incentivizing that and driving that is really important. But I'll come on to that in the, in the second point in a moment. But really about promoting your community, it should be at every touch point that you have with potential members and existing members. So it should be on the A boards outside. It should be on your front desk with a nice little sign say, get involved in our Facebook group. There's this, this, and this going on in there. You can get involved in this way. Um, there might be discounts or there might be X, Y, and Z added value. It should be across your email marketing, um, your free trials. It should be part of your onboarding as, as well with new, new clients, new uh, members. Now it's the last one. Thank you. <laughs> um, incentivize engagement, collaboration, and growth. So it may start small. There may be 10 to 12 of your biggest advocates. It might be some of your closest people that you work with, clients that you work with. But to grow your community, you need to incentivize the positive behavior, behaviors you want to see. And you guys know this more than anyone as, as fitness professionals. Um, you want to reward that behavior that's going to actually bring the benefit to the person and also to your community. So it may be that you offer a free class here and there for those bringing in new members as part of that referral scheme. It might be discounts for top contributors and things like Facebook group now flag little badges for your top contributions. Um, so you'll be able to quickly identify who those are and reward them, give them something back to say thank you for being a part of this community, for bringing people together, for driving connection and engagement. And in turn, they start to become your biggest advocates as well and start to build your community, broaden it out and advance it. So that's the final one on the, that part of the worksheet. So again, have a think through um, how you're doing this at the moment. How are you incentivizing that positive contribution towards your communities? And if you're not, how could you? Uh, what things could you do? Um, you know, just sitting down with a, a member and having a cup of coffee with them could be enough. That there's reward enough that you're giving them some time and you're appreciating them in that way. Um, if someone is bringing, there's all sorts of member referral schemes and so on. There's that that intrinsic one as well. But have a look at how you can be creative because sometimes someone doesn't want just you know a freebie or a, a discount. Sometimes it's just a little bit of extra time. You know, it's a it's an extra you know come and see me. We'll have a catch up afterwards. And that that building the community is is absolutely key. And just, be, just before we move on, one of actually of the, the good examples um, we talked on earlier with one of, one of the gym owners was just a simple call out and say, you know, you've done a great job. You're doing this great work. Um, sometimes that's all it takes. Before I, before I just jump onto this example, I think what's really important and what struck me as we were going through all of these um, brands and businesses that were doing community um, building to a, to a great success was they weren't replicating what they were already doing in venue. The community that exists there was actually quite different to what they were representing online. I think that's just something to really bear in mind and understand how do, I, how do I make my community work in the virtual space? 
because I, I can bet you it won't be actually the same that what's working in, in venue. So don't replicate what is working um, in, in person, in your in-person community, and rethink how you can position your services or um, your programs in a different way. And many of you would, would have already been doing this through lockdown, I, I, I imagine. So on-demand content um, for members, um, bookable live sessions or live stream classes through Facebook Live, probably not Zoom because everyone's a bit done with that, I think, at this point. Um, maybe it's even having a shared approach to building programs. So you might invite some of your biggest or, or most performing um, clients to actually get involved in that creating new programs, coming up with new ideas. What's going to work for them? What do they need that's missing currently in your service or program delivery? Or it might be members uploading their own nutritional pan plans for comment or for some advice. Um, you might rethink of how you're doing it. Rather than giving out, you might ask them to come to you with something already in mind and you can work with them on it in a more um, holistic kind of uh, nature nurture approach. So these are just um, a couple of examples. Um, Gymbox um, actually produced the out the box series. So they rethought how they were pro programming their um, services online. And they came up with this new series that was actually very different to what they are offering in their venue. And they had some really great programs that are around more boxer size. Um, there were some dance class type um, pieces. There's one that was very nightclub kind of feel as well. Um, it was broadening it out. And actually, it wasn't originally what they were going for. But they started to build this around their community and the feedback they were getting. Tribe. They have a great community building um, at the minute. They've actually done some of that through, um, what's the word I'm looking for, Chris? Sorry, it's gone out of my head. Uh, massively through social and, and creating it through their environments as well, but also the franchise network has, has been huge for them. That they've That's been able to harness what they built in their first club in Sheffield all the way through the franchise model as they've, uh, they've grown uh, across the world. But what they do talk about, and quite clearly on their website, they have a whole section around community. Um, from how people can pre-order and create their own smoothies and, and health shakes um, before they've even got through the door of the venue to have it all lined up ready so when they hit the ground running, it's part of their experience, it's part of the community that they're creating there. It's an extension of their brand. Another big thing that they do, and I was talking to someone about it earlier, was knowing everyone that comes through the door, knowing them by name, greeting them. That personal approach is absolutely key, and that's something that I know is very consistent across, Well, they try and make it as consistent across their franchise. I think just one of my favorites before I go on to Lonely Goat um, is they actually gamify um, their service or program. So they have milestones throughout um, your time with, with the gym. And if you hit 1,000 um, sessions, you get a, a big call out, you get a big celebration. Um, and and I know your name goes up on the wall as well. It's, it's, you're, it's almost like a plaque in the club that, that represents your, your journey uh, with the brand and the community. But it's really those small, they might seem quite small and, and actually um, unassuming, but those small moments really make a difference to, to your members in creating that special feeling. Um, this is one of my favorites, and that's technically not a gym venue as such, but actually, um, the Lonely Goat Running Club is something that I used to be a member of, but during lockdown, I gave up, unfortunately. Um, but they're an inclusive online running club and community. Now, I don't like running with other people. I prefer to do a lot of things just solely by myself. But actually, I didn't have that connection. I didn't really have things to focus on. Um, I didn't have any kind of... Um, person to talk about how I was experiencing my running or how well or how bad I was doing. Um, and Lonely Goat Running Club created that community for me. So they had um, predominantly an Instagram account, but they also have a, a really prominent Facebook group with over 20,000 members all across the world. Um, and it's really simple. They set virtual challenges through their website, through their Facebook groups, and they create this community. But there's barely any voice from the brand. It's actually the community just talking to itself. Um, and this connection, this personality that comes across is actually built through the members across the world. Um, and it's actually quite moving and touching to see some of the people's stories because there's very little that's actually produced by Lonely Goat themselves. It's all repurposed content, user-generated content. So it's all organic, it's natural, it's authentic stories that are coming out. And that really makes the brand chime. Um, 
and they use it to their advantage. So they've now start to scale up. They're doing a lot more activity. You'll see simple things like just um, quizzes, polls across their social, um, getting that feedback really unassumingly through social um, to then drive their marketing activity and sales activity. So we, we've talked around the what. You know, what is a, a virtual community? And we, we've talked around that. And, and, and Ryan's gone through in quite a lot of detail the, the how, some of those elements that we've just talked. How do you build that community? Um, for me now, the last kind of element to that is, is the why. I think we all know why we want to build an online community, why we want to create that, that brand um, passion and, 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 um, and that integrity connected to that. But for me now, it's, it's looking at the why. What benefit does it have to sales? So can anyone kind of just throw something out? Why an online community is going to help you with your sales performance? What's it actually doing? Yeah, you're, they're doing the marketing for you. You know, they are, oh, I did this great thing online and I, were you aware of this? And oh, I got shouted out and I've now I've retweeted that and I've shared that and so on and so forth. They're marketing your brand. They are your mini ambassadors that are going out in your communities selling your product for you, selling your program, selling your program, or your classes or whatever that might be. So there is an intrinsic connection between a positive and enhanced online community and you selling, you know, or driving leads or driving people to come in and try it out. Um, way more than the just bring a friend for free for the weekend and, and so on. There's so much more to building an online community than, than that. The next piece is, is support. How can having community support the members that are part of it? We kind of talked on it a little bit earlier. Everyone's quiet. I'm not going to go back to you, Guy. <laughs> Asking them the question of what they are interested in or what they'd like to see in it. Yeah, so there, there is that element of it. Uh, there's also the um, supporting each other. You know, um, so actually, as I said before, that, that big drop in that need for customer service is because they're answering each other's questions. Oh, what time is the club open? Oh, it's a quick message that, that they're going to build and answer those within the communities, those simple things that, that stop necessarily having to take up time with a member of staff. Um, supporting each other through understanding why this class? What is, what's the benefit of going to, to spin? Is that, is that suitable for me? You know, well, yeah, of course it's suitable. I go to it and it's great. I've enjoyed it and then so on and so forth. So that support connection is, a, is another massive why. Just a quick one on that. We, we help clubs to run challenges, but we had a client whose members started setting challenges for each other, which is kind of like, oh, okay, what do we do then? But they were, they were the best, most successful challenges. And the members were just egging each other on. And the fact that someone had run, I don't know, less than a kilometre, and just getting ma massive high fives and encourage yeah, some people running 10 k a day, yeah, great. But the ones that are running a short distance, just getting kudos and high fives and well done, oh, I've only done this, it's not very good. It doesn't matter, you contribute to the overall goal. Well done. And that, yeah, that in my opinion is a great challenge. Great challenge. Yeah, absolutely. And for me, I, I'm a member of a tennis club um, or a health club that's, that's got tennis facilities. And I only really started playing tennis after lockdown one. And it was the first sport that you could actually go and do. So I was like, I'll give that a go. And um, I was welcomed into a community, even though the gym was closed, that was going, well, there's an outdoor court over here. You can go and do that one. There's a few people that we're getting together over here. That community was built. The staff were furloughed. They weren't doing it. You know, it was done with the members in the group. And all of a sudden, now I'm playing tennis, I'm back in the club, the club's opened, I'm playing three times a week, whatever that might look like. That was all driven through the community that was, was encouraged to be enhanced through the, through the, through the, um, through the club. Um, marketing, we kind of talked about it connected to sales. It's doing the marketing for you. Um, sometimes you may need to steer it because you'll want your message to kind of, you know, be consistent to an extent. Um, but these people are marketing for you, they're talking about it. They're also helping you steer what type of marketing is actually gonna work. Um, and there is this misconception that we've got to spend all our money on paid advertising and doing this and do, no, 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 it doesn't have to be that way. Make sure, and we were working with a brand that said, you know, we're spending 10 grand a month on Facebook advertising, that's our marketing budget. What else are you doing? No, it's on, on, on Facebook advertising, because that, that works. No, it works, but does it help you in the long term? Is it just driving leads in? 
and that bucket of which you're filling with all these new members that have come in that haven't really bought into your brand, haven't really bought into your community, haven't really bought into what really some of the USPs that you were talking about, they're just dropping out the bottom and you're just spending another 10 grand to fill it. You're spending another 10 grand to fill it. And the just, just quickly before you move on, Chris, I think this, this sorry, what's your name? Sorry. Teresa raises a good point, actually, and probably more aligned to marketing, is many people don't ask their customers or their members what they want or what's working or what's not working. And there seems to be this assumption that we know best because it's our venue or it's our business and we're going to do this. But ask them the question. Open that conversation. Open that discussion. Even if it's over coffee or you know it's, it's online or it's virtual, get that real-time feedback. And the thing with community as well is you'll start to get that naturally. And one of the best tips I can probably give if you take away anything from today within this session is, um, no offense, go. <laughs> if you take away anything today from this session is once you build your community, you'll start to get the messaging and you repurpose that in your marketing because it's there. It's the language that your, your members are speaking. It's not what you've envisaged, envisaged in your head. It's real time. It's, it makes sense to them. A member can very succinctly sum up what your business is because they live and breathe it much more than what you think it should be because you own the business. Mm. And I think that's really, really powerful. Um, and that kind of does link into that, that final piece, the service offering. How is your service offering benefiting from having that community? Well, they're telling you that we want to set up a run club. Actually, we, we want to do this. And actually, can we not do it at that time? And have you thought there's a load of kids in the pool at that time and you've put, you know, that's not going to work. You can really utilize the members and that community in a positive way. I've seen it where it's the complete opposite and WhatsApp group become just a slagging match because the club isn't doing what they should be doing and so on. So you build it in a positive way. They'll be the ones going, actually, we could do with another class. Have you thought about this? They're driving the service offering. They're helping you with the gym equipment and go, you've got amazing stuff, but have you seen this? Oh yeah, well, we're thinking about it. We'd love that. You know, They are the ones that are helping you refine your journey as a brand and as a facility. And, and quickly, Chris, sorry, just on service offering, one thing that we didn't cover is around website. And there's one um, gym, I can't remember the, the name of it at the moment, but I'll, I'll share it on the deck once, we, once I remember. Um, but what they, they're actually using their website in quite a unique way. Instead of just displaying the, the, their programs or the classes that they have, they have like a really nice interactive quiz that walks them through it. And it's almost like, I don't know if you've seen some of those brands, particularly maybe in female cosmetics or shampoos, where you can create your own um, that's specific to you. Um, so you can create your own shampoo based on the type of hair that you've got or the color or the texture. Um, but they're almost doing that in the same way for, the, for their um, programs. And that seems like a lot of work. But actually, under, when I looked at, under the code and stuff, it was actually very simple how the way that they were programming that. Um, it's just basic logic. And I think... On a, on a small scale, scale basis, no matter if you're a small, medium-sized venue, you could be doing that to interact, gamify your product service offering online, make it interactive, make it part of that experience. So Q&A, we'll, we'll kind of do that, but I, I'd also like to um, go back to the first question that we asked at the beginning, and you haven't got to do the standing up piece again, but reflecting back now, having picked up something from hopefully the last kind of 30 minutes or so, um, where would you score yourself now? on the where do you place members at the center of everything that you do you know and have we opened up some eyes have we given some ideas some tactics some 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 um some thoughts around how you might score differently and you don't need to tell me but has anyone changed their score from the first time when they wrote it down okay good any questions before we um, wrap up and hand on to the Dean, you were always going to throw a question, weren't you? No, it's good. No, I didn't apologise. Never apologise for a question. Um, talk about that community and that, I guess, engagement on those channels. I've seen it, I guess, on both ends. When you say sort of engagement with the community, are you talking about managing it just with Facebook and everything as an internal management? Because I've seen also when it becomes external, it can go terribly wrong. When something happens at the club or you've got a member that says something on those channels that completely destroys your reputation mm -hmm. and open your regret. I think one of the most important pieces of that is to set some parameters at the start. So you'll see on many Facebook group communities, on WhatsApp communities, they actually set some ground rules. Um, and I don't think necessarily you have to be too prescriptive with that, but you want to set a, a code of conduct, basically, how you, how you expect people to respect each other, interact with each other, and that usually does the job. 
if you need to intervene, you need to intervene. That's the nature of community building. But it gets to a stage where actually people start, I don't want to use the word policing it, but people start to monitor it themselves. So in the old days of forums, you had moderators. Um, it also almost works very similar, that some of your key advocates will actually chip in and say, that, that's, that's not the case, this is the case. And they almost do that kind of brand reputation management for you, and it saves you 70 grand to pay someone else to do it. And I think going back to Ryan's point right at the very beginning where he said, this is a, this is a long game, yep. building a community. Um, so how you start the process, how you map out the little strategy around creating that online community is absolutely key. Because to start off with, if you are feeling that maybe the gym, or we've got a few problems and it's just going to be a bit of a you know, community of people slagging off the club, um, then, then you, you've got to deal with some issues before you, you get to that stage. The other way where I've seen it is that members of staff launch the community so there's always someone in it and at some stage they exit and leave it to run itself. But they exit when the time is right as opposed to just free for all, tell, talk amongst yourselves and, and you know, do what you want. Uh, so I think it's, there's a progress, a sort of process uh, with it. Good question. What would you say is the most successful platform? Facebook, WhatsApp, website, app? Um, across the board of the brands that we, we analysed, without a doubt, Facebook groups. Absolutely. An independent gyms Facebook group is an example of that. A very good example. I do think, though, it's looking at, does that cover all of your demographic? You know, because that, that might be perfect for... 80% of it, but what are you doing to the 20% that aren't on Facebook anymore? And how are you trying to work with them? Um, so WhatsApp groups are starting to, you know, particularly with, with some of the younger members, are starting to, to come back in because a lot of the younger ones at the moment don't have Facebook anymore. Um, so it is understanding the members going back to what have they got listening to them. And if 80% is looked after by Facebook, then that's great. How are we now going to launch something that covers the, the other 20%? But yeah, really interesting point. And, that, and the question sometimes is, where would you like us to set this up? You know, it's engaging with, as, as Ryan said earlier, those half a dozen, a dozen, whatever it is, key members that you know are going to be um, real ambassadors. Where are they? Where are they going to be best placed? And use that as the, as the catalyst. That's what we find within our community at the moment, that um, Instagram is the driver. Um, it is, as you know, Instagram is everybody's an ambassador for Instagram. Everybody's a PC. Everybody is, you know, within, within the younger generation. And they, um, well, unless you've got someone who uh, talks sense and promotes that, then it can very much go the wrong way. And we've seen that previously. Now we, it's took us six years to get our community as strong as it is, and it's, it's, we hope it's still growing and, and it's going to grow stronger. But like I say, it's, um, if we've got the right influencers, as they call themselves these days, driving that community, that would help. And I think Instagram is a mixed message from what we see. Yeah, and I think your point around the ambassadors are, are key. Also, your staff are key. Um, and I'll give an, an example of what didn't work within a, um, an Instagram post that went out at the club that I was at. Last Friday, um, we were launching a football program and they were using a tennis court and it was, it was great. Um, but one of the tennis coaches that worked there was like, shouldn't be using our tennis courts for this on the actual club's social media. So make sure when you're doing things that your biggest ambassadors, yes, are your, your 10, 12 you know, key members or whatever that might be. It's also the bloody staff as well. Get them on board, get them to understand what, why it's important. Um, and it, the reel of things that came after that, I mean, the tennis coach was, and I, and I look back actually when I was going back to something else, they'd done something else on tennis courts that wasn't tennis. Um, I mean, they've got 15 indoor tennis courts. It wasn't, shouldn't have been an issue. Um, but he had actually commented negatively on several posts going back several months, and he was one of the tennis coaches. And so I, I your staff are key as well, you know, to make sure that they are fully on board with the strategy and the process around why you're building a community and how you're building it. That does go back to the slide that we showed you from Topodium Group. Um, we make sure that all our team know that community is actually one of our key focuses and bringing them on board with that, our internal staff on board with that journey so they know the importance of it so that we don't have an instance of that. I mean, we don't have tennis courts 
maybe yes. we should, Chris. Yeah. Um, but so we don't have an instance of that, and that actually people know the importance, and they're brought on the journey of actually community is set, is so important to us building our long term um, brand growth business, etc. But it sounds like you guys are doing a good job. Cool. So, look, thank you. We'll take other questions. We're over in the back corner. Feel free to come and, and, and see us. But take that action plan. Hopefully, you've got some new learnings and some ideas to, to build that online community. We're around for the rest of the day. We're, we're staying for drinks. If anyone wants to come and you know fire questions at us or pick our brains on anything, feel free. Um, but appreciate your time. Thank you ever so much. On behalf of Ryan and I, um, enjoy the rest of the afternoon. Thank you.